Every shot in every scene usually has some sort of problem to solve, to make it all cut together. But filming everything in one shot can sometimes seem easier because that's the only thing you need to focus on. But it kind of just ends up adding a whole bunch of other problems that you need to solve. This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, yeah, this one might not be the most exciting car sports fashion type commercial to break down, but you know, these are the ones that happen the most often and you still get to pay the bills and work with friends and creatively problem solve ideas to make it all work. Well, that's what I tell myself anyway. So the idea of this ad is that this woman is standing inside looking at two different, you know, house loan options. Then the walls magically move. Uh, she doesn't pay for anything <laughs> and a new house. So the director and I had to come up with a way to do this. And we talked about the idea of shooting in a green screen or in a studio and, you know, building a room in there. And, but we just thought this would be the easiest option, building the room in front of the house and revealing the outdoor location. Okay, so the first thing we needed to do was work out the size of the moving wall relative to the lens size to the distance from the wall and also being able to do a loosely mid shot on our person. Once we worked out that we needed to be on a 35 mil lens at this distance and the next task was to take the wall to the location and just try a few like rough practice runs with it. So with the house location, we knew we had to find a house with the sun backlit behind it. Not only because it looks better having that edge rim light around her, but, but because of the shadows that would have cast from the tent and you just want to backlight everything in commercials so the talent looks better. Then we needed to work out what time of day we wanted to be there because at the end of the shot, we got a tilt up and there's a logo <laughs> going in there. And, and I knew we didn't want the sun to be in that shot because it would be too distracting, you know, flaring and burning out over the logo placement. So the sun path went like this over the back of the house. Around the middle of the day, give or take a couple of hours, there was enough distance from the roof of the house and the sun that we could tilt up and get the logo <laughs> in there. So that's the time we planned to shoot. Then we just worked the schedule back from that, like how long it's gonna to take to set up, etc. Then the next issue was that we need to close the road to build this tent, but we needed to be on the person's driveway across the road. So we had to get their permission. Then also the tent needed to be high enough and wide enough that we could put lights in there to light her. So we had to rig this bar across here to light the wall and to light her. And not only that, but because the camera is gonna be exposed to the outside when the wall's removed, the amount of light that we need is gonna to have to be really bright. And because the lights are so bright, the fall off is gonna be really fast. So it's gonna be quite contrasty. You can see how contrasty it is and how quick the fall off is, even from that top soft light up there. We could have done an exposure pull, but there was too many little gaps from the moving wall. And as soon as a little bit of daylight creeps in, it affected all the lights inside. Okay, so we sorted that, but we realized we're gonna be able to see ourselves and the big tent in the window reflection of the house. So let's get the art department to cover all the windows in a diffusion material so we can't see ourselves. Now she's gonna to have to walk on the same path as the dolly, but there's a dip in the road, so the dolly is gonna to have to be slightly elevated. So she's not gonna be able to walk along the track, which is kind of a pain factor anyway, even if it's not elevated. So we got the dolly on an extended arm so she can travel next to it. So these are just some of the problems and solutions and they just go on and on, but that's the job and that's Kind of what makes these common everyday type ads still interesting to make as a cinematographer. If you're a cinematographer, photographer, or anything really, and you're trying to level up to get better creative jobs, having a website is crucial so people can see your work and hire you. Squarespace is easy to use. You don't need to know how to code or anything like that. You can just drag and drop and it's good to go. So whether you want to show your portfolio of work, run an online store, everything's built into the site. If you want to build a website, you can start a free trial at squarespace.com slash lewispots to save 10% off the first purchase.
So for the lighting on this one, we used an IntelliTech Mega Light Cloth above to sort of light the wall and give her a bit of a backlight. Then we tried to bounce a 600D with a spotlight into a CRLS reflector to edge light her, but it didn't really do as much as we thought level-wise and it was a bit too moody and contrasty because the camera had like six stops of ND in it. But we kept that there and then just bounced that into it just to give the wall a little bit extra light. Then instead we got another 600D in a softbox to key light her. Then to give her a bit more of an edge light, we just used that flex panel above her. Then as she walks out, there's a bit of a bonus that the sun bounces into the wall and gives her an edge light. This minus 10 that you see here was because the sun was bouncing into the grass and making it quite green. So I just tried to take a little bit of that out in the camera. Sometimes I'll just mess around with the white balance on set and if it looks better to me, I'll just go with it. Not always just using the standard that you would use. Just have a play around with it and sometimes it looks better. So I guess, what did I learn and what would I do differently next time? I would either get some brighter lights because everything was pretty maxed out or I would try and make the side tent wall next to her. Instead of being black, maybe have like a 20 by 12 thick diffusion and that would just make a big soft source from one side. But the only thing would be, it wouldn't be as reliable and constant if the sun went in, in and out behind clouds. But yeah, maybe I would try something like that if I was to do it again. But yeah, the pre-production on these kind of shoots is so important to make sure everything's lined up and knowing where everything's gonna go because you can't really change your mind on the day. I think it took about three hours or so to set this up and you know, there's no chance of changing a mind to move the camera somewhere else or change a lens. So yeah, pre-production is where all the work as a cinematographer is done. On the day, you're not actually doing too much other than overseeing little problems that might arise and just operating the camera. Once we got it all working, I think we ended up shooting about six or seven takes. I don't know if this is the right one that they used in the final, but there was just minor differences in each. Maybe this one was too windy. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this one. Like always, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try and answer them there. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. So for anyone wondering, this is how I quickly shot that Squarespace ad. We used that IntelliTech mega light cloth above, I just had these practical lamps on the background. Then I just brought the level of them way down. I put some black gaffer tape on the back of the lamp to stop the spill on the wall. Then inside the lamp, I put some ND gel wrapped around the light globes because I didn't have a dimmer board to dim it down. Then we just pushed the slider in on the computer. I also just used lots of smoke in the room. For this kitchen shot, I just had that falconized flex light just outside of the frame here. Then an aperture MC bouncing up. Then this other light here was just my phone torch in the cupboard lighting me. And you can see the reflections of the lights in the glasses. Then for the grade, I did it in Resolve with the plugin Dehancer, which is a really great sort of film color grading emulation plugin. I really like this profile here, the Kodak Aero Color 125. And then I kept this print linear, boosted up the color density, changed the contrast a little bit. Then I had the grain on, then a little bit of halation. This plugin is so good to use. It's so simple. You just do it all in there and it looks amazing. Then I just used Epidemic Sound for the track and then the sound effects like the lightning and the rain. That's it.